Okay, well, my name is um, Julie Stevens DeYoung, and um, I'm a professor of Spanish at the University of Central Missouri, and i um, been teaching for decades, uh, uh, you know, 20 plus years, and um, I teach a range of classes, so I teach, you know, kind of traditional language classes, but I also teach um, a civilization culture class, I teach literature class, and I also teach a film class, and I also teach literature and translation, which is like a, an English general education class. Um, on my campus. So um, what I want to talk about today, and I um, have, I, I will share this PowerPoint in retrospect. Now I think I should have made it a Google document. So it's a little easier to share, but if anybody would like a copy of the PowerPoint, um, I have some instructional uh, videos linked in the PowerPoint because some of the uh, techniques that I'm going to be talking about today, um, I don't have time to explain um, how to use them. And so if anybody would like any further kind of explanation, I've created some um, short videos, mostly about five minutes or so, um, just to kind of show people how to use some of these, these uh, tools. Um, so I will be happy to just send that to anybody who um, would like a copy of that, a copy of the, the presentation itself. So um, one of the things that um, I started to do a couple years ago was um, in-class escape room activities, but they were physically um, very complicated because I had to bring in uh, you know, the, the typical college classroom just, just has nothing in it. So I had to bring in all this stuff and I, it, they were a lot of work. And so then I started to think about, well, what if we could do the escape room type of activity, which involves puzzles and some sort of a mission or a goal um, related to the class content? Uh, what if we could do that online? And so um, I collaborate with um, every year with a class in Spain, a professor that I am friends with there. And her class and my class then uh, worked together on this um, on breaking out of a digital escape room. So I kind of got going on some of the digital escape room uh, ideas, and we've done it uh, now for two years. And we've definitely made mistakes and have been have rethought some of the things that we did. Uh, I'd be happy to share the the mistakes that we made and the things that I think didn't go so well. And I really appreciate the previous presentations this morning because it's gotten me thinking also about a lot of the same issues with my students. And um, for example maybe not explaining the point of it um, as well as I, I could have. So one of the things that I'll kind of the, the thing that will underpin what I'm talking about today is this idea of links. And I call it the power of the URL. Um, and that the idea is to take anything that can be a URL. So um, image, a form, puzzles, videos, documents, and link them in a way. And so I have been doing that with the digital uh, escape room, but I've also um, occasionally connected the virtual and the real world. So pre-COVID, one of the ways that the escape room ended was that the students needed to go to the library and look in a copy of um, the Spanish novel, Don Quixote de la Mancha. And inside that novel then was an Amazon gift card. So the, the student that got there first sort of got that gift card. Um, but that was a digital escape room that ended um, on campus. So it ended in, in the physical and real world. So the idea that I have is sort of this, I, I kind of think of it as moving students along some sort of a path. And generally it's about working on foundational knowledge in the discipline. And so the, the journey has different stops along the way that reinforces foundational knowledge, whatever it might be. Um, it could be facts, it could be just any kind of skill that, that um, the students might need. And I kind of see the skills and the functions along the path as sort of like breadcrumbs, right? So this. This is the idea is that they're being led through these links through some sort of uh, knowledge uh, quest. But along the way, um, I try to make it not super predictable. I try to have surprises and also try to have interesting and engaging material. Um, I'm sort of a, I, a puzzle nerd. I really love puzzles. I love word puzzles. I have learned that not everybody loves puzzles as much as I do, but um, I've tried to, tried to incorporate them uh, as well. So kind of underpinning this too is some ideas about emotions and that um, and some of these kinds of activities, at least I hope um, it, they achieve the ability to hold students attention, um, increase memory since being emotionally engaged usually leaves a more of an emotional tra trace for us, uh, motivate students, spark curiosity. And then, um, you know, the knowledge emotions, which could include curiosity, also surprise, interest, even confusion and awe um, can be triggered, or I hope they are, by these kinds of uh, experiences. 
So the, the key question is, and how do we engage um, emotions? And so how also do we link course content to emotions? And when I talk about emotions, I don't necessarily mean something like extreme happiness or sadness, but just those, those uh, learning emotions that are necessary to keep students engaged. So I, I think that these are three of the elements that seem to be important. So one is kind of a story. Um, the other is mystery and the mystery could be, it doesn't have to be a whodunit, but just something that needs to be found out, some piece of information that is not um, immediately available and then surprise. So I like to do things that surprise um, the students. And um, the story part of it can be very simple or very expansive. So I've, I've had a story that takes up the whole semester um, and it's kind of this overarching story. And I've had a little miniature story that's a 10 minute thing in class. So the story is kind of just the pretext for learning about or sharing the information. Um, and the puzzles and activities that are done kind of re either require the students to use the knowledge that they have or they can contribute to um, the, the acquiring that knowledge. And so I have one example that is the overarching story, which is um, this concept of a, a dystopian world. And this is the um, this is the premise that we use with the the inner um, the exchange with the students in, in Spain and my and my students. So um, I think you had Dave and Lisa. You had said that um, I shouldn't try to stream a video. Um, so if that's okay, I can stream it or I can just put the link, it's three minutes uh, in the um, chat, if that would work better. We, st we still don't want to stream. Yeah, I don't know that it'll stream super well. So if you want to put it in the chat, we can just take a quick minute and everybody can click on it. Yes, uh, I will put it here. Okay, so I'm pasting it into the chat. And um, if I'll just sort of be quiet for a few minutes. I'm really just watching about three minutes. I think it's three and a half minutes. But I think watching three minutes will give you an idea of kind of how I set up the story. So I'll just, I've got a timer on, I'll wait three minutes and then I'll come back. Well, I'll go ahead and, and keep going here. Hopefully you've had a chance to see the, um, the, the bulk of the video. Um, it, it, as a couple of you have asked about, um, about the software that I used. And so I've got a list of the software tools that I use. And, and so Camtasia is one of them. Um, and it does, I have no filmmaking ability. So um, Camtasia is just um, great as far as, it's a pretty, a pretty uh, I think, affordable software program. Um, and it's really made sort of more for, for educational use. It's not for professional filmmakers, but you can get a, you, you can get some stock footage. And so that's what I relied on. Um, so some of the other, I'll give a couple more examples here with um, some things from the Google suite. I also use a, a tool called Snagit, which is a, a, it's a little bit like Photoshop, but it's also a product that's sold by the same company that sells Camtasia. Uh, Doodly is a cartoon making, or it's sort of like a, a drawing where it looks like a hand is drawing something. I also use Jigsaw Planet and then something called Breakout EDU. Um, and as I said, at the very end, I have some explanations on how to use those. Um, now, just one more last idea about pedagogical foundation. Um, one of the other kind of key components of this is just to combine familiarity and novelty. So um, I think mixing the predictable and the unexpected is, is as far as I understand, a good way to engage students. Um, also, as I said, creating surprises is important. And a quote here from um, uh, Carmen Simon, uh, she's a neuroscientist uh, and she says, the area of the brain that anticipates rewards is the same area that processes novelty. So I think that some of these activities produce novelty for the students because it isn't, uh, as, as the previous presenter, Liz, I think was talking about, you know, doing something that's so different from what they think a class is, um, is novel to them and can, and can engage them. So uh, one of the foundations is to really focus a lot on images because images can really um, you know, engage people. Visual material is very engaging. Um, I use the idea of hidden pictures. Um, it's always fun to find something. And so the idea of a treasure hunt, finding something that's hidden. Um, and I found that I, you know, when I obsess too much on making the images related to the course topic, 
um, that was too restrictive. So I decided I can still embed knowledge in the activity, whether the image has something to do with the topic or not, it's okay. And so one thing that I have here, and this is a, a, a URL that um, I also can put in the chat, but I'm just going to give you this as an example. Um, this wouldn't say relate to anything that I teach because I don't teach anything with numbers, uh, nothing about parking. So, but this is a brain teaser. So the idea is what is the number of the parking spot? And I would have students, I'll pull this up here. Um, I would have students put that information in a Google form. So this would be the parking lot question. And just to show you again here, um, if you're having difficulty with it, I know we don't have a lot of time to ponder it, but the main thing is to turn it upside down and then it sort of makes sense. And students can then figure out, oh, okay, so the answer here is I have to put in 87. And you can set up Google Forms so that students have to get an answer right before they move on to something. And so here you get a congratulations and then you have another activity. And again, these can be, it, it could be anything it could be related to the discipline, but somehow you're, you're trying to get students to put in an answer which moves them along a Google form. So can you guess the next letter? I'm gonna go ahead and just give the answer. <laughs> it's, uh, these are numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so the next letter is nine. And when you submit it, you have the opportunity to take students to yet another activity. And so at the very end, you can take them to, in this case, it's gonna be a drawing. And here's one of those hidden pictures. Uh, and again, I'm not tying this real tightly to content, but you could do something that would. So this is find the Oscar. So like the Academy Award Oscar among all the C-3PO's from Star Wars. And so this is Google Drawings and you can use Google Drawings to hide things. When I go to Google, this is, this is where the guy is, he's right here. When I click on it, this also takes me to another video, which in this case happens to be about a, a food in Spain. And with Camtasia, you can see this is Camtasia, you can, you can make the video clickable. So I tell the students in this video, click on the Spanish tortilla. And when they click on that, then that takes them to something else. And so if um, we don't need sound here, but um, I'll just sort of move ahead. When they click on the Spanish tortilla, they get another congratulation message, which this congratulations message is also a uh, Google site. So everything is just linkable. And um, the other thing that I um, use with Google drawings is you can take them to some kind of a drawing like the um, Oscar and the C-3PO, and you could have them somehow come up with numbers. It may or may not be a math class, but you can come up with numbers, which leads them to try to figure out which book to click on. So this is supposed to be shelf two, click on the seventh book over. And if they do, let's see, I have to count myself four, five, six, seven. If they click here, then that takes them to an instructional video, in this case, on how to do a t-test. So if it were a um, a statistical class or a math class, it would take them to some kind of uh, instructional video. And so this is um, how to do a t-test. So that would be a way to kind of link instructional uh, material. Um, so sometimes you can have them use knowledge and that would take them to a next step or the next step could take them to learn or review knowledge. Uh, I'm gonna jump ahead to one of the last things here and that is um, Breakout EDU. Um, and this is an educational platform uh, it does have a, a subscription fee per year. Um, some schools will pay for it for instructors, but it involves puzzles that either require students to put in shapes, numbers, colors, directional arrows, or letters. And it looks like this. So it gives students a puzzle. Um, and this is uh, something that I did uh, in a class and they choose a lock and uh, that one's in Spanish. So I'm gonna show you, let's see here. Um, a different example. So, um, oops, that's the same one. Uh, some of the examples that I have are uh, with um, putting things in order and they have to, you know, um, use, again, could be numbers, colors, letters, whatever to, to kind of get through a particular activity. Um, and then um, let's see, got two minutes left. So on the other, the other concept that uh, I, or things I like to do use is a jigsaw puzzle. And Jigsaw Planet is completely free. Um, and it allows you to create a jigsaw basically puzzle out of any particular image. So in my film class, this is a, a scene, a key scene from the film. I've taken a screenshot of it and I've put a couple words on here that are important. 
and the students have to put the puzzle together. Um, Jigsaw Planet works with links as well. And uh, you can use famous paintings. So here this is um, Guernica. And I've put colors on here because it was linked into a breakout EDU where they had to put in um, a particular color. And um, finally, there is a way you can you know, have students participate in what I kind of call a whodunit mystery. So something is stolen and you can have each person have a, a particular identity or a piece of information or knowledge. And the idea is somebody is designated as the person who did it and people are trying to find who did it. But you can use images and words and facts that each person has and can request from one another. So one example is the anatomy class. Someone stole the class skeleton and every student's given a different organ and a clue. And maybe students have to ask one another yes or no questions in groups of five or seven. Um, and they have to guess what organ the other person has. I'm, I'm a little bit out of my lane here since I don't, I don't teach anything related to biology or anatomy. Um, but when the student guesses the, the other student's organ that they've been assigned, then that student shares the clue that they have. And the clue could be just one word that combines with other words to form a sentence. Like the thief is the person who sits behind David, which would identify um, who that is in the class. Or it could be another jigsaw puzzle. Um, anyway, there are many, many po possibilities with most disciplines. You could also do a stolen work of art. Every student has a different masterpiece, et cetera. So um, I have some examples here of using Google Sites. And this is the instructional video portion of the, the, the PowerPoint. Um, I, and I have more uh, activities to show on um, uh, Breakout EDU if you want to see how those look uh, and how you unlock things and move through Breakout EDU. So um, I will uh, stop here. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to email me. And as I said, I can um, I can share the, the PowerPoint itself so that you can click on those links. Hey, Julie, that was great. And, and while people are thinking of questions, I'm going to put you on the spot because there was okay. a consensus in the discussion that you should offer a workshop. So if you oh. want to do a how to make a puzzle room workshop in the okay. near future, you get a hold of us. We'll set it up and facilitate it. I think there are people that are ready to have some fun with you. Yeah, I'd be happy to. And, and part of it is, as I said, I've done it now for several years and it hasn't always gone perfectly. So um, I have learned things. Um, it's also hard to work across international borders with, <laughs> with this kind of stuff. So I have learned a little bit about sort of what went right, what went wrong. Um, definitely, I think the second time around we did it, it was better. But oh, yes, I'd be happy to explain it. It, it, it does require maybe a little bit more time than, than, um, than what we would have to, to explain it. But yes, that, that's, it's a it's very fun and tons of potential tons and tons of ways that no matter what your discipline is you can you can come up with ways to link pieces of things together and the students as they're moving along it have that experience of surprise and hopefully satisfaction at the end that they got somewhere or they found something I, I sometimes hide things uh, like a like money pretend money um, in a pretend place in the world that they have to find. Great. And the other question is, someone wanted to know if you could make a, a who stole the election game. So, <laughs> well, I, <laughs> um, yeah, the video I made, I really, I, I know if people said, said, was I thinking about a particular leader or place, but I really, um, I was just trying to think of, well, what could be a situation where we would need to exchange information? And so I sort of imagined that, um, but it was, yeah, I did it too. I came up with that idea two, two years ago. <laughs> 